Hey dude, this is Kios Waiver Tips Part 3 and in this video I'm gonna explain a little bit about the armor skills and how do they work. Because I feel this is the best armor in the game after Doom Knight and I want you to know how to properly use it before I spend Dragon Coins on it. And so the first thing you need to know is this, this armor, their skills, works with soul threads. Just six skills, not all of them. And the soul threads are these two red orbs. When you start every single fight, you start with them activated. And you know they're activated because there is these red threads surrounding those two orbs. You click on them, then you deactivate. An advice appears up. Skills unempowered. And you click again, the red thread appears again and empower with two soul threads statement. So first start with the right, we just have two skills right here. Vengeance. This reduces enemies all resistance by 20. And when you empower it, you also increases health resistance by 50. To be honest, we don't use Empower Soul Vengeance. We just go with the base version. And if you spend a Soul Thread in this skill, it's just a waste. A, wa a really waste of Empower skill. Now go with Soul Siphon. You hit two times and you recover an amount of health equal to the damage you deal. If you Empower it, well, you also clean all the OT effects you have. You could have 1, 5, 8 DOT effects, you clean all of them. That's for the right side. Now go with the left. Okay, Empower Soul Shed. This was one of the nerf skills. Originally, the Empower Soul Shed guaranteed and a stun for one turn on one enemy. Regardless their immobility resistance, they could have 300 1000 immobility resistance and you will get a guarantee a stun for one turn. But also leave a residual minus 100 bonus to hit. And right now, the Empower Soul Shred still does a stun, but just if you're able to surpass their immobility resistance. And the residual bonus to hit is just minus 75, so they nerf both skills from the same empower attack. And the base version just a stun foe for one turn if you're able to surpass their immobility. That's all for Soul Shred. Now, aggression. You land like 8 or 10 hits and then apply DOT for 4 turns. You empower it, the DOT increases up to 10 turns. And now the last two. Soul Gambit. If you activate it, the base version increases your boost for 175 and your bonus for 200. And these effects last for 4 turns but also get negative effects. Reduces all resistance by minus 60 and defense minus 200 and the negative effects last for 8 turns. And finally, Soul Ages. The base version resists that for 2 turns. Um, when you resist that means every killing blow launched by your enemy in those two turns will be cutting half so you could survive. And the empower version resist that for three turns and also increase your immobility resistance by 100. This empower version was also nerfed. Originally your immobility increases for 300 because we use to combine these two. Empower Soul Gambit and immediately Empower Soul Ages. So, with these two activated, you get a minus 60 all 300 immobility. As they stack together, your immobility 
will be a total of 240, and no one enemy could surpass that. But right now, with just 100, well, your immobility is of 40, and all enemies from the in and the out of shock time can surpass that. So in order to not get a stun, you have to increase your N stats. And I don't use N, I use INT, Luck and Wisdom. I really don't like N. They nerf this, maybe they realized 300 was too much. Whatever. I still play the way I like. Um, and, the, and those 6 is where you spend soul threads, but how do you gather them? Well, with these two, Untangle and Soul Assault. Untangle lands like, yeah, 5 critical attacks. And Soul Assault, I don't remember right now, but I guess it's like 16 attacks or 14, 12 attacks. These two gathers one Soul Thread each one. And Hexing Wheel reduce all cooldowns by one turn so if you use one empowered skill and then one of those two who gather then immediately try to use hexing wheel in order to recover quickly those skills and you can spend more soul threads and recover them okay and that's all for the skills right now I'm gonna show you a little bit quickly rotation set for those enemies who can get a stun First, I empower Soul Shred because by the residual of minus 75 on full, he got 18 minus 75, and I got a melee burst and magic avoidance of 55. It's pretty sure I'm not gonna get a stun. Sorry, stun, I'm not gonna get hit. Okay, then use Elemental Unity to reduce even by 30 bonus to hit. So I'm reducing 105 his bonus to hit me. Now I gather a Soul Thread and use my Dragon Defenses. Okay, at this point I'm just gonna turn off the soul threads and use vengeance. And with tickles it also reduces his all minus 10 for a total of minus 30 all resistance. Gonna equip Verrat and show Lucky Yammer because I will need this in the next turn. With very I got all minus 29. When I use my empower Soul Gambit and Soul Ages, it dropped to down to minus 89. And I did it because I want to receive a lot of damage. It doesn't matter because with Empower Soul Ages I won't die. You see that the last damage won't wasn't a killing blow. But the next one coming will really be a killing blow. So this was my first turn with Soul Ages. I have two more. You saw that? The last attack was just of 25. It was cut in half immediately. And I still have one more turn. So that was a killing blow. Let's see. He does damage between 64 and 104. And the last one was of your 13. That's thanks, so ages. I just survived it. Oh, but you have to be careful because Soul Ages just survived directly damage. If you have a DOT, well DOT can surpass that skill and finish you. And now I'm just 30 
review. And that's how you kill a boss who can get stunned but use soul candy and soul ages.